Hello. Today's video, I want to talk about this uh, Faraday FE5400 PC Bus uh, CMOS RAM ROM expansion card. So I'm mostly making this video so that if uh, somebody else has this card and has questions about what it is and what it's about, hopefully this can shed some light. I definitely don't know everything about this card, but this is just of what I've discovered and how it works. Um, this card came out of a, um, a uh, CNC machine. This was the, to the Allen Bradley uh, controller. And uh, we wanted to capture the uh, ROM off of it. And so we pulled it out and I, I investigated it. So what you have, you can see this sheet here I printed off. Um, this came from a data sheet, well, kind of a data sheet. And I'll provide a, a link in the description. Very limited details in that sheet other than a page or two. Um, what it is, you can see this was built, I want to say 86 or 87. It's 100% uh, PC compatible. It's got 64 uh, kilobytes of uh, RAM. And then it's 256 uh, kilobytes of ROM, eight of the 27256 EEPROM sockets. And then over here, you see on the list, you got a real time uh, clock calendar, battery backup on the board, and timer interrupts. Well, looking at it, you can see this uh, vacant spot here on the board, and that's where your real time clock and your uh, your timer would be. So this board does not have those uh, options on there. I've looked online. There was one of these for sale, identical to this. I just briefly looked. I didn't see any that had the uh, real-time clock or the uh, timer interrupts. So anyway, um, what you have here, it's a lot like my memory card that I've made for my project, where this sits on the ISA bus and you have ROM that's available, and you can kind of use it like a, uh, not a solid state hard drive, but just this came out of a machine with no drives. So the entire code is in the 256 kilobytes of ROM. And that's what I'm thinking the intention was for the applications such as that, where it's uh, like a machine controller. So anyway, you got uh, the card here. You got a bunch of um, bunch of logic and decoding on there, and what this really does is it it allows you to select the location in memory uh, or where your memory sits and where your ROM sits. That's kind of the big takeaway that I've taken from this. The battery keeps your RAM warm, uh, and also your real time clock up to date. This battery is definitely probably dead. I think it says on the sheet they're good for about four years. But let's let's look at the uh, jumpers here. So you've got, let's see if we can get this a better angle. You've got jumper one right here, JU1. And jumper one selects the location of your RAM in memory. And this is a 64k block and you can select by segment so you can put it in one of 16 locations in memory your jumpers i had to kind of go through and figure this out uh, they're inverted so you can see you've got five sets of pins there the bottom set here seems to make no difference. I don't think it's connected. And what I mean when I say they're inverted is this is designating that the memory sits at address uh, A, uh, segment A in memory. If you look at this, so zero starts at the top uh, for your least significant bit, your most significant bit here, and it's only four bits. And whatever you select becomes zero. So it'd be Starting at the bottom, one, zero, one, zero on your jumpers. So I've moved it around a little, and that's how I was able to discover, discover how it worked. 
it doesn't, you know, you might say, oh, it's one, zero, one, zero coming this way, but it's definitely reading up the card that way. And like I say, when you select it, this becomes a one, not a zero by jumpering it. Um, you have some other jumpers on here. Uh, the manual doesn't say what JU5 is, and it doesn't say what JU3 is or JU4, but that brings us to JU2. So the jumper two there selects where in memory your EEPROMs start. And if you look, this is how it came out of the machine. And same rules apply. So starting at the bottom, there's the bottom pins. The, the set does not matter. But you've got open, open, and closed, and closed. So 1100, zero, zero, which would be C. So this sits at... Uh, the EEPROM sits at the top of memory, starting at address uh, segment C, which fills it all the way to the end of memory, and which uh, runs your uh, boot code. So, what we wanted to do, and this is more for my reference, is uh, we wanted to read these EEPROMs without an EEPROM reader and save them to a file. So what I'm going to do is I am going to change the value to 3. So now it sits at memory address 3. So when I plug this into my computer, I'm not going to worry about the, the, the RAM. I'm just going to ignore that. But I want to be able to read the ROM. I'm going to drop it into lower memory like that. So now it's in three. So I've got my my homemade PC here and that's what we're going to be running it on. Let me explain this. So normally, you guys follow my videos, I have a 512k of memory and a 64k of memory. So if I'm dropping this into address three, or segment three, um, that's going to overlap with RAM. So I fix that. So today, we're going to be running with 128 kilobytes of RAM. So what I did was I've got my, my ROM here, and I just removed the lower memory out of it. And that's going to be my boot ROM. And then I took a regular 64K card, and I made some modification to the decoding. I bridged some pins, left a pin out, left some chips off. And now this sits at the bottom of memory, 128K. So I'm going to plug it all together here. Turn the camera. And this will boot us a machine with 120K of lower memory and we're going to be adding this card starting at in address uh, segment 3. Now if you guys know much about DOS, it uh, DOS 622 does not like 128K of memory. So then I've now installed DOS 3.3, uh, which runs in 128K of memory just fine. Let's uh, go ahead and boot it up. Now this this machine today is running a. V20 processor. At 8 megahertz. And like I say, it's got 128 uh, kilobytes of memory. There you go. DOS 3.3. Now, I did not get too many of the DOS programs in here. So, um, like I can't type mem... Let's go ahead and reboot it, and you'll be able to see the memory count up. It's running pretty quick um, with that eight. Oh, it skipped the memory count. I'll have to turn it off. But I'm thinking because it's not continuous. There you go, 128K. Because it's not continuous. It's not recognizing the other RAM. Well, it's sitting at A, so 
at segment A, that's in a video memory, so I won't see that at all. Luckily, with uh, these graphics we're using, it's in uh, address uh, segment B. So, anyway, now we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to get the uh, ROM to save it to the disk. So, I did this earlier. I added a uh, directory called ROMs, and I actually saved each chip individually, like so. So it's already been done. But, uh, let me just demo this. I'd like to say it's for my purpose so that I can come and reference this video later on. You can see in the root directory I've got debug, so that's what we're going to use. Um, even though it's not showing in the, the path on the prompt, we are in the directory of ROM. So, well... With this sitting at address, the uh, ROM the, the, on the uh, the big add-on card, with it sitting at address 3, you got to count up, and the very end of it, the last 64K of that would be sitting at address 6 segments. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and dump 6, and let's go FF80, and we'll kind of dump the very end of the ROM. And what you can see here, this would be your boot code. EA is jump far. You got your segment and your offset here. So jump far F, segment uh, F000, and offset E000. So what this tells me is right there I know I'm looking at the ROM because there is boot code sitting at that address location. We know there is no other memory at that location. Also, you do have a date which typically sits into the, uh, most people put in the, the jump code there. And it uh, looks like a machine type here, FF7E, for the machine type. So, let's go ahead and dump the beginning of the ROM here. At, at uh, segment 3, 0, 0. And you can see there's a... 55AA, which seems to be a typical marker for, like, disks and things like that. Uh, if you ever wonder why, it's actually an inverted uh, of each other. So 55 is the opposite uh, bit-wise of AA. But anyway, so you got EEPROM, checksum, error 8, point, whatever. So it's got, you can tell that we're looking at the EEPROM here, because it obviously says that. So let's talk about saving this. So... Originally, when I first captured it, I did it in 64K blocks, and uh, it worked out okay, except for the very last byte did not come in, for whatever reason. So, I ended up breaking it into 32K blocks, which was fine, because each chip is 32K anyway, which matches the chips better. So, if you were to rewrite this to the chips, or a new set of chips. So, it's really simple. All you need to do is you need to set the size of file you want to, to be writing, and you just go uh, RCX, and we're going to say 8, oh, got to hit enter first, and then we're going to type in 8,000 in hex, which is 32K. Simple enough, and then we will name our file, and we'll just call it a test rom.bin, and now we just write. So we will write, and let's uh, let's just capture the very, well, well, let's just capture the beginning here, and we'll just write uh, 3000, zero, like that. So we, we're designating where to write from. We have a name and the size. It says writing 8,000 bytes. Well, in hex, of course. So now, if we quit, we type dir, you now have a test ROM. And you can see it's the same size as the other file. So if we type debug on the test rom.bin and we dump it, you can see it loaded it into uh, offset 100 because that's where com files are loaded. You can see it loaded the code and we saved that code from address uh, from uh, 30000. So. So that's how I went ahead and saved the files, or sorry, the, the code from the EEPROMs. 
Now, when you're doing this, or if you are doing this, uh, you can uh, you don't have to exit between each save. So you can do RCX, and uh, we'll call it 8000. It looks like it saved it. And we'll name it test1.bin, and you could write eight, look, 3008, like so. And that writes, and then you could actually name a new file. And then you can write, let's go 4,000, like so, and you can just work your way through, and that will that will capture all the code from the uh, the EEPROMs. So, anyway, uh, that kind of sums up the uh, knowledge that I have on this uh, Faraday 5400 uh ram rom expansion card um so hopefully if you've got one of these and you're trying to figure out what it's all about hopefully this will uh will help you know uh i'll put some links in the description on the the one sheet that i found about it and uh that's about it thanks for checking out my video today